In the action-packed, adrenaline-fueled universe of The Flash, no villain can evade justice forever. Let's delve into how every major and secondary villain met their end from season one through season nine of The Flash. Buckle up, because we're about to embark on a speedster's journey through death and defeat. Season 1 featured Eobard Thawne, the Reverse Flash. Thawne, under the guise of Harrison Wells, was revealed to be a time-traveling speedster from the future. He had orchestrated many events to ensure Barry Allen would become the Flash, all to further his own goal of returning to his time. In a heart-stopping climax, Thawne met his end when Eddie Thawne, his own ancestor, selflessly sacrificed himself. This paradox effectively erased Eobard from existence proving that even the most elaborate plans can crumble in the face of selfless courage. Is that... I'm a hero after all. You are, Eddie, you are, my... How will you get along without me? Secondary villains of Season 1 were an intriguing mix of personalities. Captain Cold and Heatwave proved formidable. Yet their enigmatic honor codes often blurred the lines between hero and villain. Golden Glider, Pied Piper, and others showcased the expanding array of metahuman abilities. While they posed significant challenges to the Flash, none met their end in this season, making their continued roles a testament to their resilience. In Season 2, Zoom, otherwise known as Hunter Zolomon from Earth 2, terrorized our heroes. Driven by an obsession with speed, he aimed to be the fastest being in all of the multiverse. His fixation ultimately led to his downfall. In an intense face-off with Barry and Team Flesh, Zoom was outwitted by a Time Remnant, a duplicate of Barry. Subsequently, the Time Wraiths, ghostly enforcers of the temporal laws, carried Zoom away, who was then morphed into the Black Flash, a grim reaper for speedsters. Thus ended Zoom's reign of terror, consumed by the very power he sought to control. Season 2's secondary villains, including King Shark, Dr. Light, and the formidable Gorilla Grodd, were no less engaging. Their arcs mostly ended with capture or retreat. Grodd's tale was particularly poignant, as he was relocated to a sanctuary on Earth 2, transforming from enemy to an empathetic character yearning for a home. Season 3 brought forth Savitar, a time remnant of Barry Allen from an alternate future. Savitar had been created during one of Flash's attempts to stop Zoom. Shunned by Team Flash and driven insane by his isolation, he fashioned himself into a godlike speedster. His vendetta against Barry led to a dramatic climax, where Savitar met his end, not by Barry's hand, but rather by Iris West's. Iris shot him just as he was about to kill Barry, a poetic justice for a villain born out of time manipulation. The Thinker, also known as Clifford DeVoe, took center stage in Season 4. DeVoe was a genius who, through a freak accident, became a metahuman with the power to absorb others' abilities. His intellect made him one of Flash's most challenging adversaries, often staying a step ahead of Team Flash. His reign ended in a poignant and personal defeat, when his estranged wife Marlies removed his chair's power source. This act allowed Ralph Dibney, the rightful owner of the body DeVoe inhabited, to regain control and effectively end DeVoe's existence. <laughs> Season 5 presented us with a unique pair of villains, Orlin Dwyer, or Cicada, and his niece Grace Gibbons who'd later become Cicada too. After a tragic accident involving a piece of the satellite that the Flash destroyed, Dwyer was driven by a relentless desire to eradicate all metahumans. His arc came to a close when he took the metahuman cure voluntarily, showing Grace the possibility of a different path. Yet, future Grace taking up the mantle of Cicada too remained steadfast in her vengeance. Her tragic end came when she was killed by her own dagger, demonstrating the painful repercussions of vengeance. Season 6 introduced us to Ramsey Rosso, also known as Bloodwork. Rosso, a hematologist, 
was transformed into a blood-controlling metahuman following his experiments to cure HLH. His ambition to cure humanity and turn everyone into beings like himself led him down a dark path. His defeat came in an ingenious manner, as Barry tricked Rosso into believing he had taken over Barry's body. Once the illusion shattered, Rosso was imprisoned within the pipeline at STAR Labs. To save the world. And when I escape these chains, I will complete my destiny. Season 7 began with the continuation of Ava McCulloch's story. Trapped in the Mirrorverse, Eva had the ability to create and control mirror duplicates of people. After a period of turmoil and confrontation, Eva chose a peaceful resolution, deciding to return to the Mirrorverse and end her villainous path. In the latter half of Season 7, we saw the Godspeed War. August Hart, the original Godspeed, sought to absorb the Speed Force from Barry and his children from the future. However, he was ultimately defeated by Eobard Thawn. As he was about to kill Barry and absorb his speed, he was stabbed by Thawn. In the eighth season, The Flash faces yet another formidable villain, Despero. Hailing from the planet Pytar, Despero is a psychic alien whose unique appearance half-human, half-feline, complete with a third eye, is truly alien and intimidating. Despero's fate in season eight of The Flash is unclear. In the fifth episode of the season, Armageddon, part five, Despero was defeated by the Flash, and his body burst into flames, leading some to believe that he died. However, in a previous episode, Despero returned to the future to ensure the world's safety, and then returned to the present to battle the Flash one last time. So, it is not certain if he died or not. In the final season of The Flash, season 9, the show introduces a new villain, Red Death. It is unclear whether the Red Death died in season 9 of The Flash. However, it is known that Ryan Wilder, who is also known as the Red Death, was defeated by the Flash and his team in the season finale. Her fate after that is unknown, but it's possible that she may return in future seasons, as the Arrowverse often plays with the concept of the multiverse. It's worth noting that Red Death is a multiversal variant of Bruce Wayne who failed as Batman and merged with Barry Allen to gain the power of the Speed Force in DC Comics. That wraps up our comprehensive deep dive into the intriguing world of villains from The Flash spanning from Season 1 to Season 7. Each season's formidable antagonist added unique layers of complexity and suspense, always challenging our heroes and sometimes even making us question the line between hero and villain. In the grand scheme, every villain's journey subtly shaped the story of Barry Allen, the Flash, pushing him to become a better hero, a beacon of hope in Central City. Thank you for joining us on this journey down memory lane, reliving the captivating clashes between the Flash and the villains that have defined the series over the years. Stay tuned for more such explorations into your favorite shows. Until then, keep the super heroic spirit alive.